The many fruit and vegetables and food production systems contribute an astonishing array of colors, textures, flavors, and most importantly, vital nutrients to diets. Yet many of these species are under threat from land use, climate change, and other factors. Declining biodiversity limits our options for a sustainable, healthy food supply. Our panelists today have proposed a 10-year rescue plan for protecting the genetic resources of the food plants that sustain life on Earth. They are Dr. Martin Van Zonneveld, Gene Bank Manager, World Vegetable Center, Dr. Nelissa Jamora, Agricultural Economist, Crop Trust, and Dr. Inek Achigandako, Genetics and Plant Breeding at the University of Albomi Cavalli. So welcome to you all. I'd like to open this discussion with some background. Uh, what have you seen in your own experience that prompted you to propose this plan to safeguard fruit and vegetable diversity? Um, Martin, why don't we start with you? Hey, thanks a lot uh, for that question, Marine. So in my own experience, um, I've seen uh, uh, a lot of uh, degradation of natural ecosystems in Latin America, where I worked before, especially in the Andes, um, which of course is also threatening uh, many, many crops. In particular, I've worked uh, with uh, wild chilies, wild chili peppers, uh, who grow in uh, seasonally dry tropical forests, and those are one of the most endangered ecosystems uh, worldwide. So. We are very concerned that many of these wild relatives of chili pepper uh, yeah, will get extinct. So that is out of our own experience um, where I have seen how these genetic resources for vegetables and fruits are being threatened. And we actually, we, we see it all, uh, also with fruit species, for example, with avocado, another crop from the Americas. Uh, Old varieties are being replaced by modern varieties. So uh, again, genetic resources are threatened. But even when uh, a lot of these uh, land races are being collected, they're still not safe. For example, in Asia, uh, 20 years ago, there has been a large effort uh, uh, coordinated by the World Vegetable Center in collaboration with national gene banks throughout Southeast Asia to rescue traditional vegetables uh, from Southeast Asia. But still many of these accessions need to be regenerated at the national gene banks and at the World Vegetable Center. So we face these, uh, still these, 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 we call them backlogs that require regeneration um, and that requires funding. So, so that is another threat that uh, we face uh, when we manage a gene bank. Okay. Uh, Nelissa, how about you? Well, what prompted you to propose this plan or work on this plan? Thank you very much, Maureen, and a good start, Martin. Uh, our goal at the Crop Trust, of course, is to help ensure the long-term conservation and availability of crop diversity for food and agriculture. And fruits and vegetables are often neglected in such discussions in favor of staple crops like wheat and rice. But they are important sources of both income and micronutrients, not to mention flavor uh, for both developed and developing countries. So it is essential to know what diversity is still out in farmers' fields and in the wild and how much of that is uh, also conserved in gene banks uh, where it is easier for breeders and researchers to access. We believe at the Crop Trust that the world needs a global conservation strategy for fruit and vegetable diversity if we are to have nutritious and tasty diets in the long-term future. Uh, as an agriculture economist, I am particularly aware that we need to be able to relate the economic impacts of conserving the diversity of these fruits and vegetables to the global development agenda. Um, I'd like to uh, share an example. In 2011, 10 years ago, 
at least 1,000 hectares of banana farms in southern part of the Philippines, where I am from, uh, were destroyed by fusarium wilt. It's a disease caused by soil-borne fungus. So the Philippines is one of the biggest exporters of bananas. Uh, so we, we do not just eat rice, we also eat bananas. And the problem threatened the survival of at least 300,000 families who are dependent on the banana industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we've heard similar stories on other crops, in other countries, in other continents. So just like the pandemic, one disease could wipe out the livelihoods of people. Uh, conserving plant genetic uh, resources of fruits and vegetables is central to food security and gene banks must remain relevant if we, so we do not lose the future options of crop diversity on which we depend as societies and as climate change. Mine is a, a personal commitment. Um, I remember that uh, my grandmother was uh, suffering from uh, hypertension and uh, my mother as well. Myself uh, suffering from the same thing. I discovered that uh, not long ago, three months ago, uh, when I changed totally my diet and now I'm living on low carb diet and the replacement has been uh, fruit and vegetables and, uh, and uh, proteins from animals, fish mainly. Um, I didn't know that uh, vegetable would be the main change uh, in my life when I started working on them uh, 10, 20 years ago. I've collected a lot of traditional vegetables across Benin, across Africa, from Futa Jalon in Guinea to uh, Tanzania, Arusha. And I've discovered that many communities are totally attached to the consumption of a diversity of vegetables. And I have been asking myself, why couldn't we save this for the future, future generation? Why should we live on major crops such as maize, rice, while we all know that the only thing they provide is carbohydrates? while we have a diversity of micronutrients in carrots, in ginger, in lettuce, in amaranthus, in boma. And all those crops are at our disposal. We can use them anytime. And the only major problem is that we do not master the biology. We do not master how to conserve the seed. We do not master the seed viability. All these things that we can do to save the plant and continue using them. In fact, we, sh we, sh we should change paradigm. Instead of thinking of always increasing the yield of maize or rice or potato, we should increase the production of fruit and vegetables because they can help us to reduce the rate of blood pressure, of um, uh, stroke, heart stroke, of all those diseases with million people suffering of it, we should reduce that simply by changing our diet, Change, simply by reducing the carbohydrate that we consume every day. We do not have to consume so much maize, rice, etc. No. So that is a personal commitment for me. And that's why I think that we should conserve, we should develop a strong plan at international level and the conserve and the produce and increase the consumption of these um, resources in our life, in everyone's life. That's my thoughts. Wonderful. Thank you. Now, we know there are many diverse and probably even competing interests among global experts in different sectors, different disciplines regarding biodiversity protection. So how can we prioritize these needs? Uh, maybe, Nelissa, let's start with you. So as an economist, um, prioritization requires some form of valuation. You prioritize what has values for you. So the call for prioritization is further amplified whenever resources are constrained. And we know that funds are limited everywhere. The pandemic forces us to think what is important now. 
But on the other hand, I think it also forces us to better prepare ourselves for the uncertain future. Uh, while the world currently faces unprecedented challenges, not only from climate change, but also from COVID-19, uh, we also need to think about our future and the future of our children. In the future that we foresee, we want to be more resilient. We want to end hunger and malnutrition, but we cannot do this in isolation from one another. So the work to conserve fruits and vegetables must be a global effort involving lots of partners. I think the pandemic taught us that we are all connected, not only spatially, but also temporally. So we need to work on these together. Okay. Uh, Enoch, what, what, what are your thoughts on this? As uh, Melissa said, we are all connected. And uh, those who take the decision should be aware that it's about our own lives. It's about our own survival. It's about the survival of the humankind. If we are not able to understand that the solution of the daily life is within the um the the diet the food that we have every day and there is no way to balance our diet if we do not include a good amount of vegetables of fruits no way so that's my talk okay martin strengthening the collaboration between these different ministries uh, for agriculture and environment but also involving other ministries like the Ministry of Education to promote biodiversity education linked to school feeding programs will be essential to ensure uh, people get aware about the importance of agrobiodiversity and in particularly the use and conservation of fruit and vegetable biodiversity as an essential part of our diets. We are still thinking in terms of agrobiodiversity protection a lot with the staples, maize, rice, uh, potatoes. So I think that um, we should think of uh, how there will be a place for conservation of vegetable and fruit uh, diversity in there uh, without uh, trying to compete or contrast to the importance of conservation of the staple crops. So... I think that is a very important point. This is uh, something we can't do alone. You have champion farmers, you have staff at national parks, gene banks, botanical gardens. Uh, these people, many others, use and protect our fruit and vegetable species that we rely on for food and for health. So how would you go about creating a global partnership among these custodians of this biodiversity? Uh, Enoch, would you like to start with that one? Yes, uh, my thought is that uh, we already have a number of partnerships in place and we, we need to learn from past experiences. Um, FAO and the IPBGR uh, in the past time developed a, a kind of uh, several clusters in regions in America, in Africa and elsewhere, in Asia as well. And uh, they got some experiences. And uh, within Africa, for my knowledge, there was a big program called Plant Resources of Tropical Africa that I had a chance to, to lead in, in Nairobi for so, some times. And that program as well developed several um, networks uh, among regions so to collect data and uh, to analyze and uh, to contribute to the protection con conservation of genetic resources. And currently, I do know that we have the uh, CGR network, uh, the CGR platform, uh, whereby a number of interactions are already ongoing. So we need first to learn from those experiences. Number two, uh, we need to see at country level, at region level, how we can put together those uh, who are involved in genetic resources conservation and see how we can stress on um, fruit and vegetables particularly and increase the interaction between those national research institutions and universities. Number three, we have um, plant breeders associations across the world in Northern America, in Africa, and they are totally active. So we can see how to have uh, subsessions or uh, um, um, subgroup within those uh, associations and uh, see how we can streamline 
the overall message and raise our voice to have uh, a kind of change within those associations. Number four, at policy level, um, for what I know in Africa, the African Union recently set a platform for plant genetic resources um, uh, conservation and utilization. And that's at the high level, at the commission level. And I uh, have the knowledge about the participation of our colleague and Danny Ku, so in the, who is a member of that committee. I think that we should push the, the African Union to streamline that committee to the national level so that at a grass level, people be uh, assigned to particular uh, activities. And this will also lead to having budget resources, funds at national level and uh, to contribute to the overall conservation. So if we have a kind of nodal um, organization from region to country, there is a way to, to speak one voice and to communicate about how we can organize ourselves. So funding can be a, a challenge, but the start discussion among ourselves is a, a key for success. Thank you. Okay. And Alyssa, your thoughts on bringing people together to act collectively? Mm. Thank you, Marie. Enoch uh, probably <laughs> said everything that needs to be said. It was very comprehensive, a good response, Enoch. Um, and thank you for mentioning the CGIR Chingma platform because we work closely with the CGIR Chingma platform. And of course, with many national and regional gene banks in Africa as well. So the Crop Trust recognizes that a key mechanism to create a global partnership is actually through these global conservation strategies. We have several crop conservation strategies on different crops. And these strategies take stock of where different players within crop communities stand. So yes, including champion farmers, staff, staff at national parks, gene banks, botanic gardens, uh, all of these people uh, helping in conserving and making accessible genetic diversity. By uh, the crop conservation strategy recognizes that specific actions are needed to underpin the conservation of different crops. And the conservation of these crops may differ significantly depending on the biology of the crop, on the representativeness of current collections, and on how these are currently managed and used. Thank you. Thank you. Martin, what would be your approach? Yeah, well, how to connect people? Uh, I think uh, Nelissa and uh, Enoch already said, <laughs> yeah, of most of it, of all of it, uh, basically <laughs> how to connect people at different grassroot. levels. But let me try to add to that. Farmers who sometimes we call also custodian farmers or lighthouse farmers, uh, people who still maintain some land races or keep biodiverse farming systems with some traditional vegetables and fruits. These farmers uh, with the vision, uh, I think they play a key role in connecting locally uh, but also nationally uh, and, and play a role in conservation uh, ex situ if they are willing to give uh, the seed share seed with, with gene banks but also in situ by or on farm by maintaining and growing these vegetables and connecting to users for example uh, by providing vegetable supply to, to schools uh, so they play a key role and all these technologies, uh, Zoom, uh, online meetings, uh, calling with mobile phones, uh, internet connection is, is improving uh, ever and ever in, in many countries. So people, people have the tools to get connected better and better. So it provides opportunities to connect these champion farmers uh, at a national and international level. Now, how can we as gene banks uh, and, and other more formal institutes support that. Uh, first of all, maybe emphasize that there are, are several gene banks in the world that, that have been specialized in fruits and vegetables, uh, such as uh, the National Gene Bank in the US, USDA. They have a very big uh, fruit and vegetable collections who can support efforts in the Americas. Uh, 
Of course, there are also in Europe several gene banks that have been specialized in, in vegetables, such as in the UK, the Netherlands, and in Spain. And here in Asia, there's, well, the World Vegetable Center. Uh, and in Africa, there are several gene banks. And so that gene bank in Tanzania, in the World Vegetable Office uh, in, in Tanzania, is now being modernized to strengthen that gene bank to provide vegetable germplasm within the region. Um, and of course, this gene bank form part of this uh, larger network of national and international gene banks that uh, Melissa and Enoch were referring to. Who's going to write the check to support this plan? Where, what would it take? Where are the funds going to come from? Who would like to go first? <laughs> I could respond first. <laughs> Thank you, Maureen. So I, I, well, I believe that everyone who eats fruits and vegetables has a reason to support the conservation of fruits and vegetables. Individually, we can all contribute in different ways. Governments need to step up to combat world hunger and malnutrition. Many developed countries need to play a more active role as well. North America and Europe, for example, have large and mature markets for fruits, for fresh fruit and vegetables with stable demand overall. Um, Euro Europe depends uh, on markets from other regions in the world to ensure year round availability of exotic products. That is why, for example, here in Germany, we can eat bananas, avocados, and mangoes at any time of the year. Although for asparagus, we have to wait for uh, the next season. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, private sector organizations and agribusiness companies are heavily involved in the marketing and distribution of these products globally. So they too need to support this plan now. Otherwise, we slowly lose all of these crop diversity options. Enoch, would you like to comment on that? Yes, um, I believe that the taxpayer uh, sh should uh, write the check, each of us, we should write the check. And our governments uh, across the world are very good in collecting taxes on various things. So they can do the same for fruit and vegetables and have a specific budget for fruit and vegetables. Every time they collect that tax, they will know that it has to go to the conservation of genetic resources. Mm -hmm. So if the mechanism is in place, um, currently, I know in my country, um, cotton, cotton is a major crop that we grow, but the government found a way to collect taxes on cotton and each of us uh, uh, um, is paying. So they can do the same thing if they want to. And if we know that this is going to save our resources, I don't see anyone refusing to contribute. So who should write the check? Each of us, I believe. Martin? Yeah, I think that is those are great points. Not sure if I can can add to that. Uh, maybe I can add to that, and that is in addition to to governments, um, we should seek for public private partnerships as well, um, and also realizing that different institutions and different organizations can contribute in a different way. Some organizations can uh, support in a monetary way, such as uh, governments. Others may help in kind, for example, support of regeneration, uh, seed multiplication of some threatened uh, varieties. Uh, and of course, there are so many farmers around the world who are already maintaining the diversity on their farm and they require recognition. Great. Well, we're nearing the end of our time. So I think I'd just like to wrap things up with a flash round. So I'm gonna ask each one of you to just take one minute and name the priority for you that is essential to the success of the Global Rescue Plan for Fruit and Vegetables. So, Melissa, one minute. First, I'd like to thank the World Veg for the invitation to be here in this interesting discussion and also to be included in the development of this global plan for crop 
that for the, the for the conservation of fruits and vegetables. I believe that there's no single bullet to achieve our development goals, but no effort can be sustained or ultimately successful without continued and expanded access to plant genetic resources in general. So the crop trials has a lot of experience with the endowment fund mechanism. And I think this is essential for the success of this plan. So we need a similar long-term funding mechanism to rescue and maintain food and vegetable biodiversity. Great. Only with a sufficient and sustained funding can a global rescue plan for fruit and vegetable biodiversity can become a success. Okay, Martin? Yeah, um, alongside the rescue of fruit and vegetable biodiversity, um, and the required sustainable funding for that. Uh, thank you for bringing up that point, Elisa. Uh, I think it is essential to uh, organize a global awareness plan uh, focusing on biodiversity education and link that to diverse and healthy diets, especially school feeding programs, because we know that through biodiversity education, uh, we can create awareness about the importance of this diversity for diets and also as a legacy of, um, of, in, of history um, yeah, in, uh, in young generations, in our children and, and grandchildren. And they, yeah, they will sustain the, the conservation of uh, this diversity. Great. And Enoch, we'll let you have the last word here. Uh, thank you very much. I'm afraid my words will not be different from what Martin said. I thank you very much for involving me in this discussion. I think that uh, World Vegetable Center has a major role, has a very big role to play in this discussion and in this action plan. Um, I believe that apart from the U.S. where we have a very big gene bank, World Veg is the second in terms of genetic resources conservation uh, for my knowledge. And I believe that if they decide to take the message to the grassroots level, it is possible. Recently, FAO uh, distributed a number of uh, nutrient sensitive uh, documents whereby they wanted to teach or um, raise awareness, but their voice would not be raised if the information does not go to the people in schools school feeding, uh, school education, and young people, the coming generation should be aware of the importance of those resources because they will be the one who will continue the work we are doing today. So I believe that we should find a way to teach in schools to young generation how they can conserve, how they can use, how they can include in their diet. And children, children are very good in influencing their parents in terms of changing their habits. So I believe that that's a very big group we should lean on to continue our actions. And World Veg would be a key partner and I'm already available to contribute to any change that is required to conserve vegetables and fruits in uh, the world. Thank you. Thank you. So education, partnerships, funding. Thank you very much to our panelists, Melissa Jamora, Martin Van Zonneveld, and Dr. Daco. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Maureen. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.